Hey, it's Andy. I'm here with John Wilson. John is a uh, senior helicopter technician with uh, Orange County Fire. He's going to talk to us a little bit about what it takes to become a uh, helicopter technician, and we're starting right now. So the way I started is I, I joined the Marine Corps when I was 19 years old. I worked on Hughes and Cobras, and when I say Hughes, that's kind of a standard uh, or a well-known name for um, for a helicopter, kind of like the one that's, uh, that's behind me. So I've been working on the same airframe uh, for almost 30 years. Um, I was a door gunner, a uh, QA inspector. Uh, QA inspector is basically after a technician or a maintainer uh, uh, per performs a task. Uh, certain tasks perform a second set of eyes uh, or an inspection um, to uh, check that off as it was done correctly, look for hidden safeties, that kind of stuff. To any of you that are thinking of getting into this field, my, my suggestion would be um, a route where you are not just gaining book knowledge, but gaining OJT. OJT is on the job training, meaning you're actually working. It's the physical part of your, your, your early stages. There's the book side and then there's the on the job training. On the job training where you're, you're, is where you're gonna get um, the, the most experience. Because um, most of us that are in this field think in a technical manner. We gotta see it, see it come apart, feel it with our hands, not just read paragraphs in a book. Um, it sticks better uh, with a technical thinker to, again, see it, do it. Um, do it over and over and over and that, that would gain your experience as well as the, um, whether you're going to a school or going to go to the FAA, you can go to the FAA with uh, the experience from your OJT on the job training and try and pass the test. Most of the schools are to prepare, to prepare you for the test. The test is um, it's quite um, intensive um, so I, I feel that with my military experience I couldn't have passed it, I couldn't have got my certification without going to school. Um, but again, while I was going to school, I was gaining that on the job training, that, that actual physical, physical experience by uh, building the transmissions at, at Robinson Helicopter. This job has many facets. I'm, uh, it's a highly skilled, um, highly trained uh, position in the mechanic world. Specifically, we're discussing helicopters because that's what Orange County operates. There's uh, basically three ways to get into uh, maintaining, working on helicopters. Um, the easiest way or the route that most people take is through the military. You get the training, you get the OJT, which uh, equals experience. So when you get out of the, the service, you can go to any place you want with that, uh, with that mindset, with that work ethic, with that attention to detail. And um, you're a very sought after uh, um, uh, worker or employee. Um, after the military, um, you will have to get, we are licensed, um, uh, we do carry a uh, federal um, certificate, it's called an AMP license, which is, AMP stands for Airframe and Power Plant. Um, they come as a, a twosie, um, you'll very rarely find um, uh, one a person having just one. If you do, it's usually the power plant side, it's a guy that just works on engines in a shop uh, somewhere. Um, but most of the time uh, we are uh, uh, Airframe and Power Plant mechanics. Um, the main focus of our job is to try and stop a failure from happening because there's no road to pull over. There's no shoulder on the side of the road to pull over in the air. So uh, we do a lot of inspections. Uh, anytime that aircraft um, leaves the ground, when it returns the following day, um, our mechanics uh, uh, walk around, climb on it, open things up um, to prevent, um, to try and find uh, an issue before it becomes catastrophic. I always say it's my crystal ball. I don't, I, I don't really have a crystal ball. Um, but with experience, listening to pilots and the air crew, some of the sensors that are now integrated into the aircraft that you can hook up a laptop and see different trends, um, you can kind of build a, um, um, a crystal ball attitude and find issues and replace them before they become catastrophic. So that's actually the fun part of the job is, is trying to predict the future and, um, and uh, uh, keep, keep the bad things from happening. Um, 
with the airframe and power plant uh, license. I went through, like I said, the military, got six years of experience there. Then I went to a, a trade school after the military. Um, but the end result is uh, you have to pass the, um, the oral written, yeah, the oral and written uh, exam given by uh, an FAA DME. Um, then once you're blessed with that certificate, they say now you're real dangerous because you can work on aircraft. Um, for the OCFA and most agencies, this isn't an entry level uh, position, just like the pilots. Uh, we require uh, experience either in the type of airframe that we have or just in rotary wing in general. Um, because like I said, you, you'll be working by yourself or a small crew, a team of four. Uh, you may go to a remote site because that's where helicopters mostly operate and you may have to make decisions. Uh, so you need to have some experience to fall back on um, uh, to maintain that aircraft in an airworthy uh, condition. So the education required, there really isn't much. Um, it's basically a high school uh, diploma uh, or GED and the only reason that is is because um, it is a federal license and to join the military you have to have that. So the, the, the basis of it is um, uh, just a high school, uh, high school degree. The maintenance manuals that we use as our guidance for performing maintenance tasks, they're written in eighth grade reading level. Um, with pictures, so and it's a cookbook fashion, step one, step two, step three, and uh, just basic, basic language, uh, pretty easy to understand. To get hired in a position that I am in, it required experience, which we call it OGT, um, just working on helicopters, building that experience, learning a machine that uh, really shouldn't fly physically, um, and uh, developing the um, work ethic, attention to detail that is required um, in this field. Okay, so since high school is the minimum, there are programs out there that colleges offer um, in aeronautics. Um, they'll teach you about aerodynamics and rotary wing specific, aircraft specific. Um, but all of that again is um, just book knowledge and not actual um, life lived experiences, which is, which is overall um, what, you, what you need to progress in the profession. Uh, after I went to, after I got out of the Marine Corps, I went to an 18 month school. It was five days a week, uh, eight hours a day. It was like having a second job. Um, I went at night, um, during the day, my, my day job, I guess you would say, is um, I worked for uh, Robinson Helicopter, building their transmissions in the factory. Um, and just so you know, um, or obviously you don't know, but you can work at a manufacturer without an AMP, that was not required. So you can go to a manufacturer that builds aircraft, work under there what's called a repair station or manufacturer certificate, and get the basic fundamentals of uh, maintaining or uh, using your hands, wrenches, um, torque wrenches, any um, calipers or any um, uh, things of that nature that you might not have crossed in your uh, in your life so far. Um, after I got my certificate, I uh, got hired on as a, uh, just a floor mechanic at, um, at a, um, an operation in Van Nuys. And it's basically just a jiffy lube for, for helicopters. Different, different types of helicopters would roll in with different situations. Hey, we just need an inspection, oil change, whatever. This one comes in with engine issues. So it was just a constant, uh, you know, in that eight hours a day, going from job to job to job to job to job. And that's how you build your experience uh, because there's so many airframes out there. Um, that, that's, that's a really good way of broaden, uh, broadening your horizons. And then after you do a few years in what I call the trenches, then you can basically go anywhere because there's helicopters all over the world. So if I were to answer the question, what do I think the public thinks I do over what we actually do, it comes back to the uh, trying to predict the future. I think they would say, oh, well, when something breaks, you guys fix it. Well, if it breaks, there might not be anything to fix because it's a burning hole in the ground. So um, the inspections, we try and predict the future and prevent anything catastrophic from happening. So I think um, some of the qualities that uh, really work out in this profession is uh, to be flexible, um, to be level-headed and um, uh, cool, calm, and collected, let's just say. And also very empathetic because you, uh, you may come across, it might be the end of the day, you're going home and you have to deal with an air, the air crew saying something's wrong with the aircraft. And you know, you're, you wanna go home, but you gotta think, they're, they might be in that, the, the pager might go off and um, they might be in that aircraft 
uh, after you walk out the door. So you have to be empathetic and uh, just because your hours are up or it's time to go home, uh, you're gonna be asked to do extra uh, for the safety of the crew and also the aircraft. Other qualities, um, humble. Um, you're not gonna know everything. You're not gonna be able to answer the question right, right when it's pro, uh, posed to you. Um, you're gonna make mistakes. Um, integrity, if you make a mistake, you damage something, you don't cover it up. You ha the air crew and maintainers have to be able to trust each other. I have to trust the information they're giving me. I have to trust they're flying the helicopter the way they're supposed to. They have to trust I'm putting it back together the way I'm supposed to with the safety checks and the second set of eyes and um, uh, not cutting corners because it's, again, the end of the day or I just don't feel like doing it. A lazy person wouldn't do well in this job. A non-self-motivator. There's, there's days where you, you just have to um, motivate yourself, however, however that is, to go and, again, do a job that you might not want to do. You might be the only one on, on duty that day. You can't pass it off to anyone else, but you got to turn that around and look at, you're special. You're needed. No one else under this, no one else in this hangar can do what you can do in certain situations. Um, so that's very self-fulfilling in, in that regard. Uh, if you're hard-headed, uh, can't think out of the box, very regimented, that's not, that's not a good mix with uh, the environment that we operate in on a daily basis. My first job in, in aviation was again at Robinson Helicopter building their transmissions. This was back in uh, early 2000s. Um, without an AMP, uh, with minimal experience, um, I, my salary was about 14 bucks an hour. Once I uh, received my AMP and I left Robinson and um, was hired on with another outfit, again, the Jiffy Lube of, uh, of helicopters, um, with a certificate and the experience that the six years of experience that I had in the Marine Corps on helicopters, um, my salary jumped from that $14 an hour to uh, I want to say it was $21, $22 an hour. Um, and then got a few years under my belt with that operation. And when I got hired with an agency, um, it jumped from that $22 an hour. I think I was making $24. Um, it jumped to $30 an hour. Uh, as I progressed in the steps, so our pay scale in the agency, and I think most agencies are the same, it's a step, it's a step um, salary based uh, as the years go by and you're, it's based on merit. Um, you work your way up the chain and get to what we call top step, where it's 12, step, 12 steps in our, in our pay um, here at Orange County Fire. Um, and I'm the second, second tier because we, uh, we have four mechanics. I'm the management side, so there's actually two uh, two stems of mechanics here. Uh, I do turn wrenches still when the workload gets um, uh, gets full or gets high. Uh, but my main my main goal these days is to uh, manage what maintenance is going on to, uh, during the day, be the liaison between my floor mechanics and my uh, and my pilots, my air crew, and uh, we make roughly uh, um, uh, anywhere from 35 bucks to uh, 50 bucks an hour. <laughs>